why hello welcome to another video for you the rosy life members channel thank you for so much for being here thank you for subscribing thank you for liking the videos i appreciate you guys all so much so i just want to talk to you guys about today i'm going to share with you a story a sore story that came into me i have i have several and i'm going to be sharing them right and i want to talk to you guys about a couple things many of you have said what do i do if i know that i've been doing everything right and i'm not seeing any movement and it's been x amount of time or whatever okay and when i hear this question especially with my one-on-one -on -one clients right when i hear this question and you say where is it where's my stuff i know i'm doing everything right a couple of things i want to say and we're going to get into this today further that first of all if you're asking where your stuff is you're not aware that you are it you're aware that you don't have it simple as that it is that simple Remember, the truth is simple. That's what I'm always saying on all my videos. The truth is simple. So if you are feeling like it's complicated, that's not the truth. There is no division in God. There's no division between you and your desires because you are God. You are source of them. There's no division between you and what you want. There's no division between you and love, health, wealth, happiness, peace, joy, success. There's no division at all between you and what you want. There's only your, your insistence that there is division and that you don't see something. So that question, remember, always comes from a place of you not looking at what is already yours. You're not accepting that it's already yours. And so what happens is you begin to look for answers. You begin to look for proof or evidence that it is yours or proof or evidence or signs that it is coming instead of you deciding that it is you deciding that it's already yours. That's it. It is a simple decision of knowing that I am all things right here, right now, and it is already mine. It's that simple. And any thoughts or feelings that come up are just thoughts and feelings. You don't have to fix them. You don't have to change your thoughts and feelings. You don't have to figure out what to do with them. Just let them be. Feel them, let them be there, but understand that those have no, tu no touch, no impact whatsoever on your desire. And I'm gonna share with you a source story and then we're gonna dive into this further for you guys to let this really sink in okay like like probably like we've never done before so this story um she gave me permission to share she says dearest 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 rose i just had to write to you and tell you that i finally manifested what most think of as a big and she put that in quotes as a big thing i know better it's all the same to source. God, the universe, lollipops, lace, and lipstick, or whatever, LOL. I did it on a time crunch. Did you hear that? I did it on a time crunch. <laughs> and I did it because of your teachings. Girl, she wrote, you are way above being a coach a teacher, doesn't quite fit the bill either. Hell, even professor doesn't cut it for me. <laughs> I love it so much. 
I have been manifesting retiring comfortably, even applied for the benefit with SSA, that's uh, the United States Social Security Administration, but was afraid out of damn fear of quitting my job. I was a trainer of pharmacy resolution specialist for, I'm not gonna say the name, things were Things there just kept getting worse and worse until one day when I was helping out a colleague and one of her trainees spoke to me in a manner that was beyond rude. I kept my professional wits about me and tried to talk her off the ledge when she said to me, I don't wanna talk anymore and I don't wanna hear you talk either. I'm done. That was what the other person said to her. I now know that the next thing I did was inspired action because I just did it without any thought whatsoever. Do you hear that? That, it, everything's inspired action. Do you see? She just did it without thinking about it. I looked at her dead in the eye and said, me too. In other words, I'm done. And she said, me too. Then I went to my computer, logged out, clocked out, and walked out. <laughs> she walked, she logged out, clocked out, and walked out of her job. On my way home, I couldn't let go of all the negative thoughts that were assaulting my brain, especially since there was some kind of hold up with my SSA application and I would only have one more full paycheck and the bills were still coming. So she left her job with no plan. She was like, I'm done. As a side note, I applied last week of May and have been calling a few times a week. I applied the, oh, I applied the last week of May and I've been calling a few times a week since then to see if there were any updates. The last time I called this past Friday, they said, I shouldn't look for anything before September 1st. Can you say panic mode, LOL. She was panicked. Anyway, for the past two weeks, I've been holed up in my room, watching and rewatching and rewatching and then rewatching again, your videos from the past eight or nine months because you cover every single thing I thought. I was doing wrong. And then yesterday, yep, yesterday in all caps, something finally clicked. Why was I making it so difficult? I'd already put in my order. So why was I taking the bait and letting my 3D opposing thoughts and negative feelings be in charge? Enough. I told myself and I accepted that things are now or how they are and I just got still in my head. Every single time one of those unsavory characters would show up, I would either remind myself that it's mine, I have it, it's done, or I would just be still. In other words, she gave no authority to any thought or feeling that wasn't aligned to her decision. She was like, I'm good, thanks. No, but no thanks. So I am so excited to manifest other big things and little things in quote she put. Well, just about an hour ago, I got my first direct deposit from SSA. And not only that, but it was retroactive to June 1st. One of the things I claimed did not affirm it. She said, I claimed it was that all my bills are paid because source always has my back. So everything always works in my favor and everyone always works on my behalf. Wow, <laughs> wow. The only word that comes to mind when I think about how I feel overall is empowered in all caps. And I feel like I owe that feeling to you. Love you, Rosie Rose. That's so sweet. I love that story so much. What I love there, you guys, is that for like eight or nine months, 
she has been watching, re-watching, like a lot, of, a lot of you, right? Watching, reading, watching, reading more content. But then she finally, what clicked for her was she have heard me say, why are you making this so hard? You already said what you wanted. You said what you said, it's done. And from and that moment on, she just said no to any opposition, to any opposing thoughts. And she said no. She didn't give them any authority. She didn't entertain them. She didn't buy them a Happy Meal and little outfits. She didn't try to figure them out. She didn't try to go talk them out. She didn't try to find the root cause of the belief that's driving them. She just stopped entertaining them. She stopped giving them power. And she said, I said what I said. And that everything and everyone is working for her on her behalf. That's powerful. Very next day, she received her funds. And she knows now that she's source. And she even walked out all that job in faith. She's like, no, I'm done. And she just knew with that conviction that it's hers, that it's done. So the timing of it doesn't matter. What matters is her decision to say it's done. And and I wanna read this to you guys because this, this verse, I've shared it before in other videos, but I wanna talk to you guys about this verse in a different way. And it is Isaiah 65, 24 through 25. And it says, before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb will feed together and the lion will eat straw like the ox and death will be the serpent's food. They will neither harm nor destroy on all, on all my holy mountain. I want to get into this a little bit differently today. Before they call, I will answer. Before you affirmed it, before you visualized it, before you declared it, before you announced it, before you claimed it, before you, whatever, any technique, before you even thought of it, I will answer. I answered you before you even called out, before you prayed, before you imagined, before you visualized, I will answer. It's already answered. Whatever the heck you can come up with, even right now, it's already answered. It's like, I want, okay, wouldn't it be nice if I, ha here you go. It's already answered, just waiting for you to choose it. Then it says, while they are still speaking, I will hear. So now, now it's saying, not only will I answer before you even ask for it, but as you're speaking, I will hear. So what is your conversation all day long? I love asking clients, you know, like, and when I refer this verse to them sometimes, and I say, oh, you know, how's your day going? Oh, it's been better. Or I, or they'll, or they'll ex describe something at work or whatever. And, and they tell me their complaint. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you, you do realize that as you were speaking, you were heard. That everything that you're speaking, whether it's silently within, in your inner conversation with yourself, talk about to yourself, like she did, she went home complaining about the coworker having that little conversation complaining, right? Everything that you're saying all day long is a technique. You're, a technique and manifesting isn't just some spiritual little moment in the morning or sats before bed or because you scheduled meditation. It's literally as you are speaking, as you're speaking, as I'm speaking right now, I will hear. You are heard. I am heard. We are heard all day long. Not just when you affirm it, not just when you are visualizing, 
but all day long. So let's say you visualize something and then you go talk to your friends and they say, hey girl, what's up? How's it going? Or hey guy, how you doing? How's your day going? Oh, I'm okay, you know, blah, 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 this and that and this and that. And you start whining and complaining, thinking that that doesn't count. As you are still speaking, I will hear. It all counts. That's why you don't have to get hung up on technique because you are a living, breathing, walking, talking, moving technique. And this doesn't mean become fearful of all your thoughts and everything that you say and everything you watch. And do, you, do you see that? You know why? Because it's your intention behind everything you say. Even if you react in an unwanted way, you know your intention behind everything. You can have a reaction. You can have a outburst. You can have a have a mood. That doesn't matter. What matters is your dominant intention. What's your dominant story? What is your dominant story? We've all had people in our lives that we work with or neighbors or friends. You're like, oh yeah, this one's always in a good mood no matter what you say. But then all of a sudden that person might have an off day and you're just like, oh what's wrong with him or what's what's going on with that one what they're not allowed to have a moment of course they are or you might know somebody that's predominantly grumpy and then all of a sudden they're smiling and they're and you're just like okay dude what's going on with you because this is not the usual like what happened are you okay D do you see but because we get used to dominantly being in a certain state. So it's not about, I'm so terrified of everything I think, or what are you dominantly perceiving yourself to be? Who are you saying that you are? So now the scripture continues with the wolf and the lamb will feed together. Biblically, okay, the wolf represents fearful doubts, thoughts, Okay, it's the wolf is a prey, right? Wolf is a prey in the animal kingdom. And wolf biblically represents fearful doubts and thoughts that will devour, okay? The lamb, and it says the wolf and the lamb will feed together. What does lamb represent? It's an innocent, right? I'm sorry, it's prey and the wolf is a predator. <laughs> the lamb is the prey and the wolf is a predator. And the lamb is innocent, represents innocence, pure, pureness, innocence of thought, pureness of desire. So it's saying the wolf and the lamb will feed together. In other words, they're going to hang out together. Lion. And then it goes on to say, and a lion will eat straw like the ox. Instead of the lion, another predator, instead of the lion devouring and attacking an ox or a prey, Right, because an ox represents like kind of like a little mindless creature that has a lot of strength and just plows around in circles. That's what they're used. They're used to plow, right? And they just go around in circles, literally. So they're kind of considered like the not the smartest thing in the book when it comes to animals. But a lion is. A lion will totally, it's a predator and it will go and prey on an ox. So, but it says here that the lion will eat straw like the ox. In other words, they're going to hang out together. And then finally it says, and death will be the serpent's food. This one's so cool. Serpent represents the senses, satisfaction through material things in 3D. So that's what the serpent represents. It represents the five senses the enticement, the desire of the 3D, being wanting to be fulfilled on a material, physical level. That's what people seek, right? Is like have, having the physical 3D satisfy you. That's the serpent. And it says that, that it will, dust will be the serpent's food. Well, what is dust? Biblically, dust is always referred to as you shake it off the dust off the sandals. There's so many references in the Bible to dust in the sandals, shake it off, right? And when you see something you hear, shake it off. That's where that comes from because dust represents the illusion. It's the non-reality. 
of things, that it's not even real. Shake it off. It's not real. That is what this, uh, this subscriber story, that's what she did. When those thoughts came in, she dusted them off. She shook them off. She's like, nope, just shake it off. Let them go. Because she's seen, I'm no longer going to allow this, this 3D me entertain these kind of thoughts. I'm going to shake them off. They are not even reality. What I'm saying is the only truth is the only reality. So now we have that all this combination of, and then it ends with, so it says the wolf and the lamb will feed together and the lion will eat straw like the ox and dust will be the serpent's food. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. What does mountain represents in biblical? It's the imagination of God. It's awareness of being. That is where you go and manifest things. You don't, it's not a manifestation in 3D. You're manifesting within, within divine mind. The, 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 the one divine mind of God. That's where we are all manifesting everything. Within the divine mind of God not out in, in 3D. So when you're in imagination, when you go within and you are praying or you are calling or you are speaking, all of these things, these predatory thoughts, these doubts and fears, right? Will not, it won't matter. It says because they neither will neither harm nor destroy what you have desired, what you have manifested in divine mind, that none of these thoughts, fears, feelings, the 3D illusions, the senses, your, your, all of it, the circumstances, none of it will harm or destroy what you have created within, that nothing can get in your way. So the only thing that is in your way is you insisting you continue to speak and say that you are not who you say you are. You are who you say you are. You are that. So when you are speaking and when you are wondering where is it, you're just like, no, I don't choose that. That's not who I am. I said who I am. That is it. That's final. Nothing can destroy what I have decided I am. Nothing can harm my desire. Nothing can get in the way when everything we are manifesting in divine mind, in that imagination. So there is nothing that can come between you and your desires. So it doesn't matter if you think you've been doing it right, you've been doing this forever. All of that is just a story of you saying, well, I've done it. I've done my work, where's my stuff? You're the one declaring as you are speaking, you're saying you don't have it. You either have it or you don't have it. It's that simple. You must decide who you are. You must decide if you have it or if you don't have it. There is no maybe. There is no sometimes I manifest and sometimes I don't. That's another identity of a version of you that says sometimes, you're the sometimes person. Be the always person. I always get what I want all the time because I am the one and only source. And I was talking to another client and I said, you know, there's the business term of, there's a, a source, you know, you have to source things for the company or the business that that is actually someone's job. She said, yeah, she said, you have to source things. You have to go find them and, and source them to provide those for the company. Well, you're the source, you're sourcing. If, if you're not, if you're not sourcing what it is that you desire in imagination, how do you think it's gonna just show up in your experience? Everything is you. It begins with you. So if you're not sourcing it in divine mind, how, how do you think it's gonna show up? It's not gonna just show up. You're, you're the source. You're the source of all things. So you have to realize that sourcing is always sourcing. <laughs> That's you. But what are you sourcing? Are you sourcing that you don't have it? That it's not here? That you've tried it all and it's not working? 
that's what you're sourcing and that's what you're going to experience. Or are you resting that I am source? And it's more about understanding or actually accepting, deciding and accepting that I am the one and only source. I am the one and only cause of my reality. There is no other cause, there is no other source. I am one and only. I am the only sheriff in my reality. I'm the only sheriff in town. I am the law. There is no other law. There is no other source. There is no other cause. I'm it, period. And if I'm it, that is what I expect to see. So it's more about recognizing who you really are then it is about affirming what you want. Because if you know who you are and that you are all things, what else do you think you can just remember? You're answered before you even call. How is that possible? That you already are, you've been answered before you even said it, before you even imagined it. So for those of you who are afraid, but what if, don't I have to say it? Don't I have to affirm it? Don't I have to direct it? Don't I have to say what I want and, until I convince myself? Did you hear the verse again? Before you call, I will answer. That means source already knows what you want before you even said it. Because source is you. You are source. You are source. That is why you can know that source already knows what you want and has already answered you. All right, my loves, thank you guys for watching and thank you for being here. Thank you again, members, for um, being over the membership channel and post your questions up there for my next live is gonna come up soon. So go to the most recent post where I asked you to post your new questions and go ahead and post them in there. And when I start seeing questions in there, I'll hop on live and answer those questions and any other live questions that you guys have as well. All right, my loves, I'll see you soon. Bye.